Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to the October 2013, or 2018, wow, I'm way back when it started. The October 2018 Spooktacular Tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, and we have, it's a recap, because the tournament happened last week, as it is currently November 4th. But, we have a recap, so we're going to be starting out basically the same way. I The way I do these recaps is I essentially simulate having gone through the tournament. So, instead of... I'm not going to go through every replay. I'm just going to go through one replay for every single round of the Swiss. And then I'm going to go do basically the top side, like what I would have normally done doing the brackets. Because normally when I do the brackets, it's like I do brackets of... You now I do one of the semifinals, and then one of the, then the winner's finals, and then the loser's finals, and then the grand finals. That's typically how I do it. So we won't be seeing everything, but we will be seeing what we would have seen had I cast this last week. And didn't because I wasn't available. Anyway, so first match is going to be between Astran, Venom, and King's Dad against Izzeride, Dimefriend, and and Firepluck. That's group two right here. So yeah, that's gonna be first. It's gonna be on Anansonia, and let's get started. So again, this is a three v three tournament. Astran starting out with. No, oh, not even that anything. King's Dad going in with Amph Bot Factory and Venom going in with the gunships. Not a bad start, Matt and Sonia. I'm a bit surprised we're seeing King's Dad going for the Amph Bots over in this little corner on the bottom left. I would have kind of expected gunships there because it's a more protected section, but this should work fine. They're far enough away that it won't be a big deal. At the same time, Astron having gone forward, already planned it out too. Nice little use of map marks there. With a Shield Bot proxy. Same time, Team Red, Dimefront going for the Hoverbat fa Hovercraft Factory. Air for Izzeride in a more typical position. Like I said, I kind of expected gunships there. And very proxy spiders coming in from Firepluck right off the bat. I like it. This is already turning out to be a very exciting initial match. So, like I said, the gunships are kind of vulnerable. I expect Venom is going to be the first target just because this is where people typically go first. At least in a 1v1 context. I mean, in a 3v3 context, you can kind of go either of these. But this is still the most vulnerable starting location where Venom is right now. So, Venom's going to have to be doing a lot of the defense. Kingstad... I mean, they're going to be obviously setting up the offensive strategy. They're probably going to be pushing in later on. Getting a few ducks and archers now just to provide pressure. But ultimately, that's going to be the backup is what can Kingstad do now that Firepluck is is in here? And they've been scouted out. I mean, King Kingstad clearly knows they're there. Like, this is not com this is not foreign. This is not unknown. This is just really annoying because now Venom can't really expand here. Like, Fireplug is dealing all of Venom's mexes. And at the same time, providing a lot of threat, which allows Izzeride to come in here with the Ravens and probably start providing quite a bit of pressure, getting a few Metal Extractors here and there. Ravens do one-shot Metal Extractors. They don't one-shot Harpies. I don't know why Izzeride's going for the Harpy right now. I mean, just let the Swift deal with it. Actually, this is now it's fine. The Swift dealt, help deal with it. Hooray! Because Ravens 800 damage. Not quite enough, but it works. I mean, you can bomb... Okay, I'm sick of my marks. You can bomb out any gunships like bombers fly above gunships can bomb gunships it's a bit of a weird interaction but it does work so with that venom is really falling behind here again they're the most vulnerable they're gonna have the hardest time holding ground they're relying on kingstad and astron to help out but astron's way out in the front because they're kind of expecting a ramp assault and kingstad's all the way out on the other island and there's no easy way to get over other than terraforming which they're not doing so, other than that, I don't really see any way that Venom's going to be really saved. And honestly, I'm kind of curious, how much would terraforming be here? Oh, I can't tell. Right, there's no way to see the cost. Oh, wait, that's restore anyway. Ah, where is it? Yeah, like, if you were to do... Oh! Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. Unfortunately, I don't know what the cost would be. But that would be what you have to do. And it would be somewhat expensive, but I think it'd be worth it just so that Kingstad has an easy way of getting in to help out Venom. Because right now, Venom is basically completely fighting Firepluck on their own. Kingstad's helping out a little bit, but there's not much they can do because they have to go around this entire path. And Astrid can help out as well a little bit, but again, they're also covering the front lines. And while I'll grant that the Northeast team hasn't really threatened the front lines yet, they are still so much inside of Firepluck's base that Astrid can't help unless they go back. Which will leave the front lines open, and that will allow for the Northeast team to actually deal some damage. So right now, this is a situation I I see really going in Northeast team's favor. 
I am quite impressed, however, by the fact that Southwest hasn't fallen behind economically in the meantime. But Northeast team is still slightly ahead. And more importantly, they've just been able to just keep the pressure on. Like, really, one good assault. Ooh, like that. Getting rid of Venom's commander. Nicely done there. On top of the daggers coming in here. This should pretty much seal it. Daggers coming in. Getting rid of the, the skirmishers that are stopping all the spiders coming from Firepluck. I mean, if those are gone, the Redbacks are gone. And that being said, though, King's actually doing a fine job pushing everything away, helping defend. But Firepluck's still there. Dimefriend's, Dimefriend's helper, gla or helper daggers are still coming in and still managing to clear up enough of the territory that this is... This is pretty much a solid base for Fireblock right now. I mean, it's being pushed back, sure, but there's only as much that can do. Especially with Fireblock's factory right there. Like, if Fireblock loses this, they're kind of screwed. Which is pretty typical Fireblock, to be honest. That is what they do. They go for the risky strategy, and if it doesn't work, they resign. But, at this point, the risky strategy is seeming to work very well. The only thing that's kind of awkward is actually that, at the same time, King's has just gone forward. Sending in a conch forward to try to just steal some metal extractors. And at the same time, the Bastion's taking the entire center. Because Firepluck mostly situated themselves on this plateau and is just focused on attacking Venom, Astrin has nothing threatening them in the center up to about here. Like, beyond here, yes, they're going to have to worry about the fact that Dimefron and Ezerite have figured out maybe we should take the center. Actually started building metal extractors there because, you know, money's good. But Astrin's basically the entire economic backbone of the team right now. Kingstead can't really expand. Venom is just completely pressured out. But at the same time, Kingstead did go a little bit clever. I mean, using a recon command, I can jump into the water and... Or not even jump into the water. Just jump across, go across, get down here. Judging by the footprints, they went through, Ven went through Venom's base. So now at this point, Kingstead, they can expand. They have put some pressure on the northwest as well. I just am not really sure how much of an effect that's going to ultimately have. Because Kingstead's coming in here, they're providing a bit more of an economy, but Fireplug's this little tumor inside of the base. There's not much that it can be done about it unless they actually get rid of Fireplug. Then the Southwest team has a chance of actually getting back in this game, but at this point, Fireplug can just project force, get rid of some of Astrin's assets here. If they get rid of the commander, that's going to be huge. I don't think they will, but still, it's very threatening for Astrin. They can't really expand that much. Otherwise, they're going to be hit entirely by Fireplug's forces. Heck, Fireplug. Oh, getting a crab. I was about to say you can get rec recluses, but a crab is even better. Just plop it down right here. Use that to completely destroy everything being built up by Astrin. Now, there's not much Astrin can do to stop that. That being said, though, Fireplug has kind of been pushed back a bit. The Northeast team has taken the advantage of all this time and all this money to build up a much larger army. But these metal extractors, their days are numbered. And it looks like... Kingstad is going to make darn sure that as soon as he gets a chance. But it may not even matter. Astra's commander goes down thanks to Dimefriend's mace. Very, a very effective assault with front lines. At the same time, Izzeride coming in with the Ravens. I think really only two Ravens this entire game. I uh, built a few more than that, but still. Coming with the Ravens. Helping out the Halberds to wipe out Astra's proxy factory. Essentially eliminating Astra's entire force in the front lines. All this stuff here is dead. As soon as anyone puts any pressure on Astra's base, it's done. And at this point, that's... I mean, that's not a bad timing, though, for Fireplug. Because I mean, at this point, Fireplug is going to lose their factor. At least it's getting under a fair amount of pressure. Losing their metal extractor, sure. But still, Northeast team is 20 metal per second ahead. The Southwest team basically has nothing they can really do right now. Other than maybe get rid of the Kingstad base. Maybe rebuild over here, get another Shieldbot factory. Something proxy forward to at least project force. Because right now, the entire center of the map, it's going to the Northeast team. And they already have the economic advantage. And on top of the Ravens, just... Why not? Just get in the back. Sure. Wipe out another factory, why don't you? It's not like there's no defenses here. Because there aren't. Like, that's the one thing. There. I'm a bit surprised we haven't seen Venom or Kingside build any ra razors. But honestly, not that surprised. They've been under a huge amount of pressure. Like, this entire game, it's just been a matter of trying to keep stuff alive barely. And, I mean, really, it has been barely. With Kingside's pr sorry, Fireplex pressure... Everything's been focused on dealing with Fireplug, not as much been, has been focused on dealing with what will happen next. Just because the resources weren't there, and really the attention wasn't there. It couldn't be. I mean, now that Kingstad's been more or less pushed back, put someone into remission, it's a little bit easier, but not really effective. These metal extractors are protected by the crab that Kingstad's built, so there's not a whole lot that can be done. Honestly, they're going to be rebuilt by Kingstad, and that'll probably herald the end of the game, unless this assault force actually manages to come through. If that 
if King Stats Assault Force is able to get rid of some of maybe Dime Front's commander, get rid of some of this expansion over the west side of the map, that could do the trick. But I still feel like the fact that Astrid lost their entire frontline force, their factory, their commander, there's not a whole lot they have to hold the center right now. Dime Front and Ezerite haven't put a lot of effort into taking it. They just don't really have to. Actually, come to think of it, these are mostly our anglers, so even then, I'm not really confident there's a whole lot of room to really win here. And at this point, Kingstad just pushing forward. They want to get rid of everything. And get rid of the expansion that's been built up by Kingstad. Although well, Kingstad's actually doing a decent job just keeping themselves alive as it is, but again, the Northeast team is still way ahead. They have more territory, they have more of an economy. I'm not really sure what the Southwest team can do. Like I said, this is an attempt right here. It's a couple of halberds and a stinger, though. That's going to put a pretty swift stop to it. And again, Fireplug still has not been dealt with. And it's kind of unfortunate that the gunship plant wasn't used to get rid of it because it can't now. I mean, the Razor's up now, but before, for a while it wasn't there. There was a bit of an opportunity to deal with it. There were tarantulas, mind you, but the tarantulas got killed quickly enough that I don't think it's going to be a big deal. Still, though, here's the attempt. Venom coming in with the Redbacks and Hermits. I lack confidence in this, mainly because this crab is able to get in here and get rid of it. But maybe there's something I'm missing. I just don't expect those, especially seeing as we aren't seeing Venom actually go to get rid of Fireplug's base. We're seeing Venom go to help support the front lines, which, at this point, I'm really not sure what's best. Right now, the Northeast team is in such a commanding position that I don't really... I can't really say whether or not Venom can do anything right now. I don't think they can do anything right. I think everything they do is always going to leave them open to something that their opponents could just deal with. I mean, the one thing that is a bit of a saving grace, the Southwest team, they aren't... Actually, they're kind of far behind. I mean, they have a reclaim from time to time. That does help. I don't know. It's just really hard to say. Although we do have... Oh, a Jin coming in here. Okay, Jin Grizzly. So it looks like we're... We're going to be seeing possibly Proxy Grizzly into the backyard of Dimefrain's base. Which is an interesting idea. I mean, there are quite a few lances already in play, so I'm not sure how effective that'll be, considering the army is there. It exists. But, as a way of potentially stopping further army development, it's not a bad idea. I still think it'll be a bit too late, though. Just looking at the way the game is progressing, I'd be very surprised if the Jin managed to even get halfway to Dimefrain's base before the towel was thrown in. I just cannot see it happening any other way. I mean, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just that I lack hope. But looking at this, consider, considering the state of the game right now, considering the fact that there's eight Ravens going around here, basically any factory is dead whenever Izzeride wants. Although, to be fair, that's some good angler usage. But still, it's not going to be enough. The front line's going down. The back line's being heavily damaged. Fireplugs essentially rebuilt everything they had before. The Fireplug Cancer has come back, and that is probably going to be it. I mean, even, without, even with the fact that they were e-stalling slightly, it's not going to be enough to completely destroy Northeast Team's chances. Though it does buy a little bit of time for this Jin to get over into Dimefront's base. Again, I'm curious where it's going to try to actually deal with Dimefront's base. Like, what is, where is it teleporting from? But, well, it might find something. I don't see it. I would expect a teleport beacon around here or something. Oof. And the Halberd's coming here with no resistance whatsoever. There will be the Grizzly up in a minute. No, no, nowhere near soon enough. I think this is going to be it. He's right. Supporting Fire Pluck. I mean, they lost again. There was Metal Electra. Two recluses. But it's still not enough. The Halberd's coming in the back here. Pretty much getting rid of the main strategy. It's clear that King, King Stout was going for teleporting in Grizzlies. I mean, with defenders, with pickets coming in here, the fact is they have to fire and then reload, and the Halberds are waiting for the fire, waiting for the reload, then going in. The Grizzly should get finished anyway. Waiting for the pickets to fire did buy enough time for the rest of, of Ashton's forces to come in to defend. But it's still not quite enough. The factory is going down, partly because of Astrin right now, honestly. But still, the factory goes down. The Jin is in place. But I don't see where it was teleporting from. Again, I didn't place a beacon beforehand. So that is kind of it. I mean, Southwest team certainly trying. Oh, actually, that's what that was. Venom usage to help get rid of the crap. But even with that, I mean, a Valiant 
bit of defense there. Does get rid of the crab, which was the main reason Firepluck was actually able to get back into the game, but they have another crab! So unless more Widows pop up, I don't see that really working out. And I don't see any other Widows popping up, so this looks like it is going to be game. And clearly the Southwest, or Astron at least, thinks so. They've lost their entire front line. Everything they built up, their entire strategy has been completely destroyed in front of their eyes. Kingstad and Venom are holding on as best they can, but there's not a whole lot they can do right now. I mean, Astron has no way of rebuilding. There's really no room to rebuild. No resources with which to rebuild. Northeast team being twice as far ahead in terms of resources as, this, as the Southwest team. So honestly, I'm... I mean, I can see why they're not throwing in the towel. It is a tournament game. You kind of want to hold on in those. But no, not anymore. That is going to be it. The Northeast team takes it. Really taking a pretty solid lead from the beginning and never letting it go. Although army value was fairly even up until the last third of the game. But still. The metal usage was higher. Everything was just an advantage for the, the Southwest team. And it's no surprise. Or sorry, the Northeast team. It's no surprise, therefore, they won. Again, Fireplug with that with that push right here. That is typical Fireplug. They go in, they do something risky. If it doesn't work, they resign. If it does work, then they win. And this time, it, they won. So good for them. Yeah, back to the simulated results. So yeah, this is going to be first match. And we ended up having, in this first round, we saw the Diamond from Fireplug is had one, or is right one. Then Catastrophe Top Cag Segaro beat FFCW with Green Squid. The Team Russia, which I don't know why it's called not participating team, but that's what it's called. Ended up winning their game. I'm not sure who's on that team exactly. And Farhan Manu and Isaac winning their match against Trifak, Kokomoko, and Wesley. So the next match we're going to have is the round two match of Segaro Catastrophe Top Cag versus Sprang, Droppy, and Zenfer. That is this one. Match six. So yeah. That will be up in literally right now. I'm just going to re replay the intro to make it easier to cut on YouTube. 